Hello, this webinar is to show you how to create a basic project involving the LPRO 915U2 radio systems. We will review the software required to configure two radios to send two analog input signals in each direction and two discrete signals in each direction. The first step involved is to download the latest version of our meshing configuration software and install on your computer. The next step is to run the software and then select create a new project. The software will then ask you what region of the world these radios will be installed in. Please select the appropriate region and hit OK. Next, select a directory and project name and save. Next, you'll be presented with the main screen showing the options for the 915U2 and 115E software. To add the two units to the project, select Add New Unit, then select the unit type. Repeat the process for each subsequent radio. Now we have our two radios shown, and you can expand the project tree to show all of the options. Click on the title of each radio to be able to program the unit, which sends the configuration from the radio into, sorry, from the software into the radio, or load unit, and load unit pulls the configuration out of a radio and stores it in the software. I'm going to change the names of these radios to base unit. And the second radio, I'll change to remote unit. Now I'll go ahead and create mappings to wirelessly transmit the 4 to 20 milliamp and discrete signals. I'll select a gather scatter mapping, which allows me to send all of the signals in a single radio transmission. The destination I will be selecting as the remote unit and the radio port of that remote unit. Okay, we are going to send four data points across. So I'm going to set my IO count to four. We'll change the update time from 10 minutes to one minute to speed things up a bit. For local address, I need to select analog inputs. I'll go ahead and select analog input one, hit apply, and then repeat the process for analog input number two. For the destination radio, which is our remote unit over here, I will select analog output number one and analog output number two. Okay, the next step is to set the discrete input values. So in this case, I will send digital input one over to digital output one on the opposite radio. We'll repeat the process for digital input two. So this now sends digital inputs one and two to digital outputs one and two on this destination radio here. Okay, now what we will do is we will set a communications failure indication by clicking acknowledge. Now we have these acknowledge failed registers available and I am gonna use digital output eight to indicate that if this message failed to transmit. Digital output eight has an LED that is directly next to it on the terminal block of the radio. So you can observe that LED's status to determine if communications are successful. 
If communications are successful, DO8 will be off. If they have failed, DO8 will be on. Now I'm going to repeat the same process with the remote unit to send its analog values back to the base unit as well as DI1 and DI2. We'll go ahead and create the mapping by selecting, oops, sorry, we will select a gather scatter mapping to send all values at once. We also have the option of a write mapping, which can send a consecutive block of, of values, or we have a read mapping, which will read the values from the remote radio. In other words, sends the data in the opposite direction. We're gonna use gather scatter for today's example. The destination radio here will be our base unit and selecting its radio address. The IO count we will set to a value of four. The update time we will reduce down to one minute. The local address will start with the analog inputs and select analog input one. The next analog input, we will also be sending across in the same transmission. And here we'll select the analog outputs for the base radio. Next, we repeat the process for digital inputs one and two. Now, remember that we have already used DIO 1 and 2 for the previous, uh, uh, for sending the data from the base radio to the remote unit. To send the next two digital values from the remote unit back to the base unit, we will use channels D3 and D4. Now, the 915U2 has eight DIO on it, they can function as inputs or outputs, depending on how we program them here. So we'll start with DI3, and we'll send it to DO3 on the opposite radio. We'll repeat the process with DI4, sending it to DO4 on the opposite radio. And again, I will it enable acknowledgement so that we now have a fail register so we can very quickly by observing the status of D08 or the LED next to D08 on the terminal block of the radio determine whether this mapping was functional or not. I will have to remember to wait one minute for this mapping to occur before we determine the status of communications through this LED. As an alternate, we could trigger any one of these inputs here, and they will force a transmission to occur within one second, and we will then see the status of DO8 uh, turn off as the radio makes the transmission. The transmission is successful, and DO8 is then uh, extinguished. Okay, we go ahead and hit apply, and now all we need to do is click on the remote unit, Click on program unit. Make sure that I have my unit powered up, that I have an ethernet cable plugged between your laptop and the radio, and also that my laptop, the ethernet port is on the same subnet. So for example, I would set my laptop to 192.168.0.5. Then I would enter in the IP address that is inside the radio right now, and then hit OK, and we can program the unit. Now, keep in mind, if this is a brand new radio, fresh out of the box, then it will have the IP address printed on the rear label called setup IP address. Enter the setup IP address in this box. I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, session and we will be publishing many other webinars on the intricacies of uh, the 915U2 and all of its options in future sessions. Thank you.